Aloha, adventure agents. Agent Tex here. Agent Axe here. Agent Axe here. We are going on an Aloha adventure today on the island of Maui, Hawaii again. And today's Aloha adventure, we're gonna do a lot of really fun things. We're gonna camp on the beach, just me and Agent Axe. We are going to go fishing. We're gonna have a really good time, but along the way, we are going to follow the trail of the Menehune. Now, what? is a menehune or who rather is a menehune you might a ask. many human it does sound a lot like that doesn't it <laughs> well it is a legend about a group of humans who have a very unique genetic trait and that genetic trait has something to do with them at full height only being about two to three feet tall now there's a lot more to this legend I am not the best one to tell that story. Here to tell that story and to help guide us through this is none other than the Kahu, the keeper of knowledge here on the island of Maui, Hawaii and the islands. Some of you may here. remember him from our previous Maui hook mystery adventure and he helped us a lot in that whole process and he's gonna help us out today. It's really great to be here, aloha. Kahu. Aloha, aloha everybody. How you guys doing out there? So glad to be a part of this uh, huaka'i Huaka'i is a Hawaiian word for adventure or journey. Oh, really? And I'm so excited about this whole idea of really trying to follow the trail of the Menehune because uh -huh. yes, they're very, very unique people that existed at one point in time, a long time ago. And they were, they're, they're, they're really very industrious society. The uh -huh. thing is, most of the work usually happens at night. So when we wake up the next day and we find, find out these, these great ditches or pathways or highways, all done by the Menehune. This is night. exciting. Isn't that this cool? is great. <laughs> I love this. This is so. So fun. they're like dwarfs. They're they're. Yeah, you could say they're like dwarfs. There's all kinds of humans on this planet, and all different shapes and sizes and colors, and there are humans who only reach a certain height. I only reach a certain height. Agent Trinity is taller than me, and uh, Agent Trinity's brother is much taller than her, and some human beings reach a certain height that is more close to what we're describing here with the Minihune. I looked and up. So I think it's I think it's really, really interesting to imagine a tribe or community of these human beings who lived at one time and that uh, well that were just somewhat elusive. You know they say that the Minihune were not only very industrious but very mischievous. Sometimes they pull little track uh, it's kind of like Agent Axe. I'm sure he would love to pull a prank here and then. Yeah. But you know, every once in a while, they love to pull these little tricks just to remind you that, hey, you're not alone. We're here. Uh -huh. And we're here to do some things with you and for you. So I'm going to take you guys on a little bit of an adventure to show you where the Minihuni have been in this area. They've been spotted. People have, oh, really? actually, people have actually experienced ah. their presence. And so All right. we're going to go I've out to a point them. right over here. Let's do it. Had a conversation. Let's go and see where. Uh, and I was watching a, uh, a documentary um, on Animal Planet about uh, sightings of the Menehune here uh, on the Hawaiian Islands. And there's a lot of people who have had experiences that they believe were encounters with the Menehune. And so we're going to go and investigate one of those encounters. And Kahu here is going to tell us the story. Is the Maui hook still at the school? It is still at the school. Oh, nice. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks so to you, you may guys, remember it's a, the yeah, Maui it's a hook. constant reminder that there's a whole world of wonder and adventure to be found out there. Yeah, so, so. What, what was the name of the adventure that you, that the Hawaiian name for adventure or something to that? Hua like, Ka'i. Hua Ka'i. Hua I love ka that. Life is a Hua Ka'i. Yeah. And Aloha is the key. I love that. The wow. The story I'm about to tell you is a true story. This is beautiful. Because uh, it happened to a cousin of mine. Okay. One day he was out here fishing and minding his own business. When out of the blue, here you can actually stand over here. Out of the blue, this kid popped up. He didn't hear him. He only saw him. He was about three feet tall, had sparkling eyes, flowing red hair and he didn't say anything so my cousin is going uh he, he turns he goes oh, where did you come from and this little boy doesn't say anything only looks at him points his hand to his chest and then points out there not a single word 
telling my cousin I'm from this place. And, and so my cousin goes, oh, oh, okay. Continues fishing. And then he tells this little boy, he goes, uh, um, where are your parents? The boy just takes his hand to his chest and points out over there. And uh, he asks, you go fishing around here? The boy only goes. And then he says, where, where, do you, where do you go fish? Right there, he disappeared. Guess where he ended up? Where? Right out there. So that's where we ended up. Oh, wow. So, so wait a minute. So he disappeared and I guess the word you would describe it is teleported right over there. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> In a flash. All my cousin could do was just, he was, he was part paralyzed and just <laughs> yeah. surprised. He just couldn't say anything or do anything. He's holding his fishing pole and he sees this little kid up at the point and uh, inviting him to come and check out the spot where he goes to fish. And then uh, this big wave came and he disappeared. Wow. So we're going to go out there and check out what the fishing spot of the mini right. looks like. Let's head on over there. Do we have fishing poles? <laughs> he says, do we have fishing? Yes. We brought fishing poles so we can do some fishing just like his cousin in the Menehune did. This was actually created by the, uh, uh, by the sugar managers, plantation workers, so that they could transport sugar by donkey out to this point where they had these, uh, where they had these much smaller boats just waiting for the delivery of the, uh, the raw material. Oh, really? And then uh, the boats would go row out, row out to the larger ships. Wow. Oh, he's crowded. Get him. <laughs> he's finding refuge. Oh, I got him. You got him. I got him. All right, already. Look at that. Look at that beautiful creature. Man. Okay, so we haven't had a Minahune encounter, but we have a little crab here. <laughs> wow. You want to hold him? All right, careful. So this is a thin-shelled rock crab. Yeah. What yep. is the Hawaiian name for oh. that? Oh, <laughs> maybe we should let him go. Yeah. <laughs> they call him Aama. 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 Aama, okay. Oh, All right. Boy, well, really maybe slipper. we'll catch that Aama's big brother later and have a, a good little, little meal with it. So, this is the place where the little boy teleported look, to. Look, look Axe. See that, that point, that landing over there? And in a second, that Menehuni ended up over here. Where? Like, right where there we were standing earlier? To here. To here. That's quite no, a story. But where That's are quite here, a story. Like, right here, right here, right in this area. Yeah. Right here. You know how we know it's right here? Because this is where, when the waves come, it starts to break on the wall. Boom. And according to my cousin, ah. a big wave came that day, and as soon as it hit the wall, it came down on that little Manihuni and, and he they disappeared. Were gone. Yeah. That is cool. That is really cool. I love stories like this. I yeah. really do. I think so. If you so take a look neat. out here, when the waters are nice and calm, and clear there's nothing but blue and the fish start to come out and feed on the uh the seaweed uh -huh. the algae and this is just a just a beautiful beautiful location in 1790 there was an incident involving a captain by the name of simon metcalf simon metcalf was uh kind of a merchant seaman he had this large boat and uh, the hawaiians knew that his little boats those dinghies if they broke them down, they could harvest all the nails, right? So that's what they did. They stole one of the bolts, took out the nails. Simon wasn't happy about that, so he decided to make an example of them. And he asked the people to come out and meet him out here beyond the reef. And then he opened fire, killing about 100 men, women, and children. Oh, wow. That's terrible. I'm, I'm going to show you a place where some of them are buried at a heiau or a temple called Kaivaloa. Okay. Yeah, come on. All right. All right. Let's head that way. That is a very sad story. I love stories. Um, some stories are sad, but true. And it's important, even when stories are sad, sometimes to hear about them. Agent yeah. Axe just got an awesome necklace. And what did he say the name? Kukui seed. Kukui seed. So it's it's like the just, uh, Kahu just gave him this necklace. It's like the professor from Pokemon in Pokemon Sun and Moon, Kukui. Uh -huh. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. But Sun and Moon is oh, based off Moon. the Hawaiian Islands. Yep. So you got it. it's 
it might be named after this. I, it, I bet it is, yeah. No, I bet uh, uh, it's the other way around. The Pokemon series, he's named after this. This is older than that. There you go, Agent. There's your staff. Nice. So this is neat. Thank you. Mahalo. So um, I, I do want to explain a little bit about the kukui. So um, it's a real nut. It's used, been used uh, by my ancestors for uh, to actually provide light. You can string ten of these when the nut has reaches maturity. There is this oily substance. It's a natural kukui nut oil. The kukui is uh, Hawaiian for candle nut, mm. and it's called the candle nut because it could string them up and set it on fire uh, and it'll slowly burn from one nut to the next that is neat that's really neat they also like would take a they, they would take a bundle of uh, 15 to 20 nuts bundle them together and make a torch, torch. Out of it. yes hey you know how we made torches out of fat wood mm -hmm. uh, the way that the indigenous people of the Pacific Northwest would have done maybe we could try this out one day and see how well, the Native Hawaiian people would have made that a torch one that one is with the blossom the orange blossom that's the how tree. Back in the early 1800s, when Queen Ka'ahumanu and Queen Kyopulani put an end to the ancient worship system, this heiau was really a structure in its day. And um, Ka'ahumanu Kyopulani, with the help of all the other high priests and chiefs, um, put an end to the worship of, in these temples. So, people in the surrounding village still had an affinity for the old form of worship. So when their loved ones passed away, they put them in the heiau or in the temple. This plant, this is called uh, Ahualoa. This Ahualoa plant, if you dig it up, remove the top and you just strip off the bark it's medicine for you huh especially if you have a sore throat that's I neat throat. take bingo up, go ahead <laughs> dig it up remove the roots all wash right, the roots let's see and it'll be good for you all right Ugh. that was tough all right so we'll snap this off and Take it. Ah, save it for later. I forgot my adventure agent's knife, so. You, you're gonna, we'll take it down to the stream and then you can wash it, clean yeah. it off. Yeah, we'll do a little, so is it the bark it's of the, the root? Bark. Okay, okay. That, it, I was like, oh, the root looks pretty bark? tough, but. All right, so we'll just kind of strip that off. Medicine in the pocket. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna <laughs> sing you the leaf. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's everywhere and nobody realizes. These pods. Do you right? eat them? You, you can. Um, what is this Raw? called? Oh, puma. Interesting. Oh, the seed inside? Yep. Yeah, it's supposed to be a, kind of a light, sweet taste to it. Mm-hmm. wonder is, if it's the pod you eat. Oh, wow. Now that's kind of fluffy there. Oh, that is sweet. Yeah, it's got a sweet juice to it. It's pretty <laughs> foamy. It's kind of like a marshmallow. <laughs> oh, wow. That's exactly oh. why these trees were planted here. Because uh -huh. the honeybees love See the, the mesquite bees. tree. So that's it right there? You can tell it's not natural, right? It's, oh yeah. It's definitely no, a man-made structure. Uh, Look at all. When yep. we get closer, you'll see the size of those rocks. I mm -hmm. mean, the people had to be really committed and dedicated to a cause uh -huh. to build this structure. Yep. And if you can actually see it from, uh, from the air. Google Maps, yep. the satellites, yep. yep. So really, this is an archaeological buffer to preserve this area. Ah, okay. So, so someone developed and built a house here. Yeah. Right That's here, bordering. All the way around. So, what is this called again? This is Kaivaloa Heiau. It's an ancient temple. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the ruins, what's left of it. Uh -huh. Kaivaloa Heiau used to actually be quite the gathering place for the community where they would hold their, uh, their worship services. Um, this was a heritage center, a uh -huh. learning center. This is where the community came together. Yeah, well, that's neat. So we're gonna we're gonna get permission so that we can uh, 
traverse up in these rocks and uh, and then take a look inside. Ego nak punai moya kial iki ahewa hikapu. Eu <tos> Aloha hie 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 Aloha hie hie Alright, I'm gonna go check it out. I'll let you know the post is clear. If I disappear, don't come in after Okay. <laughs> we won't. It's a perfect representation of of the uh, encroachment on on traditional things uh, when it comes to the the tracker over here in the background uh, while we're about to enter this heel. Coast is clear. All right, all right, agents, let's head in. In temple structures like this, it would not be uncommon for them to have sentinels posted in the surrounding area. Uh -huh. And their kuleano, their responsibility is just to make sure that nobody accesses the temple without mm -hmm. permission of the uh, right. the kahunas who have responsibility for protecting the area. Right. Man, this, this must have taken a considerable amount of work. Oh my gosh. To bring in all of these rocks. Oh, sorry, Absolutely. right here. Absolutely. That's a lot. Wow. And you know, like we were saying earlier, it takes a great deal of commitment and dedication to want to come together as a community mm -hmm. to build temple structures like this. Yeah. And if you look inside, you can see these, these, these got these little pathways and it's got these walls on the inside. Mm -hmm. There are actually several burials that are situated here uh -huh. of the uh, last of the remaining ancestors who grew up in this area called Oluwalu. So how, how old would you say that this structure potentially oh, this, this is? is? Yeah, this is several years old, uh, maybe uh, half a century. Uh, Half a millennium, mm -hmm. about 500 years. Right, yeah. Wow, that is so neat that that these stones right here, uh, 500 years ago, will say, in the very least, this stone here, um, in case anyone came and added something later, was placed there and it stayed in relatively the same spot for 500 years. That's really, really you know, neat. That's a good point, right? Think about all the things, all the huge world events that have come and gone over time, mm -hmm. and these have remained unchanged. Yep. What are all those? All those like piles of rocks right over there? Is that part of the temple? So that's part of the temple, and also it's a boundary of a burial that's found inside the area. So mm. just on the other side of that wall. Right. Is, a, is an ancestor sleeping mm -hmm. in the area. So the 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 people who were massacred by uh, the the what what did you say his name was? Oh yeah, Simon Mitcap, the Oluwalu massacre. Simon Mitcap. So it's called the Oluwalu massacre. Yep. Okay. That was back in seventeen ninety. Some of those people were buried right here. Yep. The ones that could be recovered because uh, the sharks probably carried away. Right. The rest of them. Mm-hmm. So Agent X, look yeah. straight that way. Tell me something you see that's uh, different or that. interesting. A little bit more to your right. No, that, that, that structure oh, yeah. of rock, branches in that rock. Over that there. rock over there, yeah. Yeah, now that, that looks like it's somewhat newer because that rope, I think, looks like something that's fairly new. But who knows how long? Mm -hmm that rock has been standing up there this particular structure is called a lele oh, okay and um, it was uh, erected put up by my cousins as a symbol of their return to the care of the heiau ah. and of course over time it got weathered the mm -hmm. wind and sun beat it and now it's on its side right. they will be back to put up a new lele mm -hmm. so that they can continue their responsibility in this area that is neat. 
Yeah. And that, you get to see it, both of you. Yeah. And the world. And the world, yeah. Cool. off here in the stream. Can you get a picture of this? To see what's oh yeah, we can figure out what that is. Here, you try to figure it out. So what's the name of this stream? So we're actually, um, we're standing right next to uh, Oluwalu stream. This stream actually goes deep into the valley and then it starts to connect with Iao stream. Ah. So they say that if you, if you take this path, you'll end up over in Iao valley. Some of the stories I read about the Menehune um, was that they live in the valleys, yep. kind of deep in the... Yep. So maybe the Menehune came down the stream here out oh. to the ocean to fish. Automatic. Automatic, uh -huh. because they need water just as much as we yeah. do and they value it uh -huh. just as much as we do. What did you find? A plum tree. This is a plum tree. No way. Java plum. Java plum. So we're using the Seek app to learn about these plants here. Now they say the Minihuni had a reputation for building these ditches almost overnight where there, people would go to sleep. The next day would, they would wake up and they would find these channels uh -huh. cutting through their taro patches. Why wow. would the Minihuni do that? Something is because the Minihuni value the fact that they can get the your taro to grow and they can come by and get some without you even knowing. Ah. Yeah, these streams here really remind me of Washington and the beautiful streams that are in Washington. But it's got much more of a tropical feel to it. So beautiful. So there's a wall here next to the stream and you're saying that this is an old wall? Oh yeah, this is ancient. Wow. That is so neat. Look at the effort that went into building it. Yeah. Man. So, so this is this to prevent flooding, maybe? Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. So that tells you. I mean, looking at where we're at and looking at where the stream is at, uh -huh. that tells you how high these waters can get. Right. Um, if we get a real downpour, serious downpour up in the valley, mm -hmm. yeah, it'll flash flood and right. It'll raise the water. So we found a little Minihune path here. Huh? <laughs> so neat. To me, that makes sense. So there's petroglyphs here. Mm -hmm. We, the Hawaiian word for petroglyphs is kii pohaku. Kii ki pohaku. Pohaku. Kii meaning picture. Uh huh. Pohaku meaning stone. Ah, a stone, stone picture. picture. Yep. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, petroglyphs are some of the oldest forms of art in the world. Uh, in fact. They are actually, I think, cave paintings and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, Hawaiians did this as well. It's really neat because we were talking about <clears throat> speech and language and writing and that sort of thing. And every culture had their own way of doing this. And originally it was in pictures. And it's funny how what's most important to us today are memes, right? Pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's yeah. taking over again. Huh. And so. Uh, it's really, really neat. I think that uh, it's it's that it's something that's so deeply embedded in us as humans. Memes, pictures of things, you know. So you found one? Yeah. See. Where? Where is it? Right there. Oh, wow. Can I? Is it okay if I come if I come up to it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got okay. One over here too. Okay. Check this out. This is so neat. Look at that. Wow. 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 That is neat. Who knows? Maybe that is a picture of a Minihune. Oh, here's a here's some more right here. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah, from before we only found two because 
they yeah. went extinct. And, and it, now it, it, their life. It's really sad. It looks like some people have been damaging this here. Yeah, we gotta get some kind of a preserve going. That is beautiful how your voice reverberates off of the, the walls there. Way up from the mountainside. I gotta ask yourself, how did they do that? Right, right over there, actually. Uh, their way, drawings up there. Way up there. Right up there. Ah, I should have brought my binoculars. Yeah, when we were when we were about Axel's age, we used to be able to go up there. Uh -huh. Get close and personal. Time has removed all of those. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> all right, Kahu. Well, mahalo for taking us on this journey and. Uh, we're going to continue the journey here, uh, uh, camping a bit here on the beach, so we're going to have an adventure there. Um, but uh, this is where we part, uh, but we'll be together uh, in our minds and our hearts. All right. Mahalo. Aloha. 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 Oh. We're headed to do some fishing here. this beautiful little uh, rocky reef spot and there's actually a nice little camp spot that's flat right there um, so maybe we'll catch some fish here and camp out tonight we'll see there's also a beach down the street that we can camp out at I don't know I'm just going to stick with a small pole and a little bit of shrimp on a hook like that. The weight is the head of this hook and so we'll see if we get the same kind of luck that we had last time we were fishing here. So fishing in an area like this is actually pretty dangerous uh, if you're not paying attention. If you play close enough attention, you'll be okay. But if one of these waves comes in and you're not watching close enough, you can get knocked over, pulled out. Either hit your head on a rock or sucked out there whenever the wave pulls you back in. So uh, I'm gonna have to be really careful here. But if you pay close enough attention, you'll be okay. You just gotta know when that water goes way out, be ready, because a big one's coming. All right, so I got a little one here. <laughs> it's another one of these uh, hawkfish or rockfish. This one's too small, we're gonna let it go. Still got my bait, so I'm gonna try again. Alright, so Agent Axe is gonna try to do some fishing right now, but it is very dangerous on these rocks, so I'm gonna keep a sharp eye on him. Well, 
was our last hook. Lost it. Oh well. All right, so no fish, but uh, we got some mangoes here that we got from the uh, Oluwalu. So we're gonna hang here and watch the sunset together. What sure. is that? The inside and sweet. That oh, it's not sweet. Part. Is this the cane sugar? Yeah, I Did you? it with my teeth. He gnawed all of the outside of the cane. <laughs> my teeth hurt though. They hurt? Kahu said it would be good to clean them. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, about peeling the outside of it off with your teeth there. Here, I got the adventure agent's knife. He kept asking me for it. Mm. Oh, that is so good. Wow. This is uh, cane sugar, cane. That we found growing wild over there. Let's maybe get another piece to take home for Mommy and River. Okay. Yep. Well, that's good enough. I know how much cane sugar we need. Mmm. Oh, this is so fantastic. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, I want to keep one of these on me all the time. Mm. All right, so we didn't have any luck catching fish, but right there, there's these crabs that, uh, oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh my. That's huge. That come out at night here and they dart in and out of these holes. So maybe we can catch us some crabs. Have a bite? <laughs> I got some headlamps, so. Oh man, that looks great. Oh. But we gotta wait till it gets dark to do that. So, we're gonna hang out here till the sunset. Oh, sorry, just hit him in the face. We're gonna hang out here till the sunset, have a little father-son time, and play some Pokemon while we're sitting in a hammock here watching the sunset, huh? Beautiful. Oh my gosh, dude! Yes! <laughs> it's dancing. It is dancing. You're standing on one. Look at that. It's right there. It's trying to bury itself. Get it. It's gonna run. You got it. Put it in. What the? <laughs> they are so funny. They, they do dance around. Look at that. That's hilarious. Okay. Okay. So are these are they horned ghost crabs yeah, or, or horned. something like that. No, we look. They're look, horned wait, something. Catch, seek, seek. Oh, seek. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Seek and ye shall find. I know what it is. It's a horned ghost crab. Okay. So, so we're gonna identify it with the seek app right here. It's like a Pokedex <laughs> for real creatures. What? Uh, no, tap on it. Deck up on. Ah, horned, horned ghost crab. Ghost crab. Yes. Horned ghost crab. Let's see what it's uh let's see what its funny name is. Occupied keratophthalamus. That's way too big that's way too big of a word for me to chew off. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try to catch some more of these so we can eat tonight. And there's signs that we can't camp over here, so I don't know what we're gonna do, but um we'll see. We'll see what's gonna happen. But we also gotta keep our eyes peeled for the Minihune. <laughs> oh, that hole is too small. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. Hey, little gay. Girl, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so I got these headlamps. They're great. And they are going to be one of the next items. We just bought a bunch on the Adventure Agents website. Oh, whoa. Well, okay. They get washed it back up here, you see it? You see it in the water. 
Oh, there it is. Okay, right, right there. Okay, it's right there. I got it, I got it. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh. Man, yeah, they do pinch. Oh, oh! Woo! <laughs> Look at it go! <laughs> oh my goodness, they are so funny! They are the funniest things, man. Okay, so they're like, they're super defensive. Look at that. Those claws are just ready to pin. I mean, and they can do some damage too. All right, come on. Hey, yeah. Da -da. Hey, do the yeah. challenge. Hey, look at Jewel. Do the pinch challenge. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to get hurt that bad right now. Uh, it's not pinching me. It's like, no, you want me to pinch you. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. Oh, look at that. Look at that fish. It's a trumpet fish. It's a trumpet fish. Wow. You got it? Grab it. Oh, that thing is quick. Wow. Oh, you can see the fish out here at night. We had a net we could grab. Oh, that is a big one. Man, okay. Oh, oh that one's too small. I think it's hiding in your foot. Uh, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Ah. Oh. oh, there we go. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Got it. Got, Got it. it. These things are so difficult. Ah. Oh, they're step so. On it. You step on it. I don't want to get pinched. Oh, whoa. Look, it's burying itself right here. Look at that. Wow. That is so neat. Sorry, dude. Oh. Oh, my goodness okay so here's the trick you got to grab them like this on the side see that did you figure out the trick you got to grab them on the side see that look at that i can like, grab it right here right but they're still kind of slippery like that yeah this is cool look it's like it's trying to claw me <laughs> yep oh. yeah yeah they have some decent meat inside of them on the back Oh, there's one. Oh, that's a big one. Hold on, let me see if I can get it. See if I can get it. Ah, uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. It buried itself in the sand. Oh, I got it. I got it. Axel, it's buried down in the... See? Oh, dude. I got two now. Yeah. Oh, these things look so mean. Look at that. Ha ha. I went pinch you. Oh, look at it. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, look. Look, its eyes go in and out. When its eyes are up, it doesn't look that mean. It's like, oh hey. But then when it when it sucks its eyes back down, it's like it's his mean mug face. <laughs> Alright, there's another one. And another one. They just go crazy. Look at that. Dancing pot of grass. That is hilarious. Oh my goodness. Ah, I get the way I Got it. Gotcha. There we go. Every time you put a new crab in, they all start dancing again. It's coming. It's coming towards me. It's coming towards me. Oh, oh, stop, stop. Oh, get it, get it, get it. That is a big one. Okay, got, got it. it. Remember, grab it from the sides. It's the best place. Watch. There you go. Good job. Nice work. Ah, that, that claw is going to give us some meat right there. So you can kind of tell they're half buried in the sand. This one's trying to hide. It, it didn't even move here. We just saw the shape of it and it knows we're after it. So it's buried itself. Mm. But man, that one's tough. Uh, that one's a little small. Let's eat it. You want to eat it? Yeah, let's pin let it pinch you. This, let it pinch me? This, one. this kid wants me to get pinched real no, bad. No, this one. That one? Good night. <laughs> that one's got a gigantic claw. All right, ready? Look Prepare. at all of them. They're still jousting. Oh my goodness, you're right. They're all fighting each other. It's a crabby crab world, you guys. All right, let's see. There it begins the dance. They're all, oh, look at those two giant claws. They're locked in battle. Wow, look at that. They got a hold of each other's claws. That is, I wonder how many crabs we can get. Look at, whoa, oh, they were four together. So this one, it's just not moving. It really must be either blinded or it thinks that I just don't see it. I think it is blinded. Ooh. That's a feisty one. And look at that claw. That's going to have some meat in it. Oh. You got it? 
Man, with these flashlights, it's pretty easy. Yo! Ha ha! Get it! Get it, get it! Don't stop! He's got one shoe. <laughs> That's a stomping shoe. <laughs> oh my goodness! They are all just grabbing each other, man. Alright, so Agent X says I should let myself get pinched by the little one. Let's see. Alright, there you go. It's not even pinching me. It doesn't even want to. Ow! Ow! Let me see. Let me Never see the mark. <laughs> it, it just... Look at that. Oh my, it's bleeding. Uh, I don't think it actually drew blood. It's got a little blood blister. What's like halfway. Oh. That is such a big hole. Yeah, stick your hand in there. Oh my goodness, his whole arm is in there. It's gonna bite you. <laughs> Let's dig it out. You wanna dig it out? Yeah. All right, we're gonna see if we can follow this tunnel. I wonder how deep it goes. Ugh. It's a giant one. Oh Do my goodness, it, it? it's spiral. Oh, that is so cool. It goes around, it spirals. That is so neat. Oh, right there. Oh, you got it. Step on it. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Ow. Oh, 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 You know what? They're gonna make a crab ladder. <laughs> we don't watch it. They're gonna build a ladder out and they're just a one by one. There's a leg out. right there. Leg! Oh, whoa! It's brutal in there. They pinched a leg off. Yikes! Look at it! Oh my goodness. You, you all behave, okay? Which way did it go? Oh, I feel it. It's right there. Oh, wow. Look at Good it. work, guys. I X. found it. That's awesome. You try to get it out. Okay, uh, I'm concerned here. Oh, we should just dig it to our... <laughs> It's like, it's time. It's my time. That's a kind of a small one. But it's got a big claw there. It's... Oh! Yeah. All right. Yo! yo. Looks like that... Agent Axe found the best way. We're going to dig these things up. That's cool. That it's is good cool. good for though. us. The spiral. Is, yeah. Here, maybe a little bit more to this. Oh, yep, oh, right there. there. Oh, nice. Do -do -do. Oh man. Are you at home? Okay. Knock knock. Knock knock. Good. Oh wow. Okay, there it is. That is a big one. Ooh. Oh. 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 Oh, that one's super white. Look at it. Okay. Ooh. Okay. All right. Sorry. Whoa. 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 Whoa there. <laughs> whoa there, well, they're pinchy. Yikes. No. Oh, look. Look at it. <laughs> These things are so incredibly defensive. Look at that. Let's see if you can catch it by. Oh, there you go. Nice! Look at that! Yeah! Wow! Good, good yeah! Yay, what's I think we found the biggest oh, hole did. yet. I wonder how big this crab is. This, this is definitely the biggest hole we found yet. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, it! Yeah. <gasps> oh, oh, whoa! Nice. That's a giant claw! Ho oh, ho! Yes! Okay, wow, that's so neat because this one isn't any bigger than the other one, but the claw is a lot Look at bigger. Look the tiny one though! Let's see, there's the claw. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Whoa. That one's big. <laughs> that one is big. Yo, yo. So you just kind of slap it down when it tries to come out. Wait, slap it, it down? To, whoop, whoop. Oh, no. <laughs> that didn't work. Hey, that is huge. That is huge. That claw is so big. So the claws have the meat in them. Oh, another one. So that red dot over there, that is the Adventure Agent's lantern. And I put it there. You can see it from a distance. It's really great. And that'll last forever on that mode. But you can have a, a basically like a waypoint. You put it up high if you're in the forest so you can see it from a long way away. You know that's where your camp is. Big as a hole and a bigger. <sighs> oh, 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 there it is. Oh, Yo! that one's big. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is definitely that is the biggest one yet. All right, so we figured it out, man. This is how you get these crabs. Uh, I'm kind of concerned that at one point. Oh, oh. Hey, oh, that one's not that big. Yeah, it's not that Oh, but it's got a huge claw. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah. Yo, yeah. a little tiny crab just ran in there. I wonder oh, if... three other ones right there. Oh, yeah, you're right. 
I wonder if these crabs have their young and they stay, they keep them able to go into these burrows right here. Yeah, just look at that. Look, they're almost getting out now. Alright, ready? Go. Who can get their crab first? It's the crab challenge. Go, go, go. Crab challenge. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I win! Winner! Yo, yo, whoa! Yo, yo, ho! That is a huge claw! Ooh, that's you got it? Yeah. Where is it? Oh! Oh, oh, whoa! Oh! Get it! Get it! Get it! Get away, you! Hold on. Get it if you. Oh, look! That's cool. It found a little place to hide and then it ran. You got it. Whoa! Oh, so that. Whoa! Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, if you kick it up here. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, there it is. Look at its eyes! Okay, alright. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Alright, get it. Get it. Oh, there you go. Okay, get it back. That one is so big. Man, these claws are gonna be great. Oh, it can oh. reach its claws way oh. back. Tickle. Yo, oh. Ah. Tickle, tickle. I got it, I got it. Oh, 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 I felt it. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> it's right there. Oh, 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 oh. That was small. Yo, ah. Yo, oh, oh. Oh. It does have a big claw, man. Oh, it's trying to go back it's in. It's a really big claw. So something we found interesting is even some of the, the smaller ones, the ones that have a burrow have a big claw. So, I think I read they something, no, I'm sorry, I saw, yeah, I saw something in, like, some kind of documentary about their claws and how it's, like, top of the food chain, the biggest claw, or top of the hierarchy, I guess, for crabs. It's the crab hierarchy, like the lobster hierarchy. Uh, so, I'm going to peel me some sugar cane here with our adventure agent's knife, www theadventureagents.com slash shop to get your Adventure Agents survival knife. So you can cut your sugar cane open and you don't have to use your teeth. You got another one? Nice. Show, them, show the agents. Wow. That thing is huge. Nice. Put it in the bucket. And come have some sugar cane. Mm. This is so good. Mmm, yeah. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It's fantastic. And it's like it's the perfect pH. You know when you eat candy sometimes, it like hurts your teeth? This doesn't hurt my teeth at all. I love this kid. He's, he's so in his element out here. Like while we were walking on the trail and talking to Kahu, his number one focus really is what plants and animals are around me and how can I learn about them and learn about how I can eat them or just how I can uh, be around them or experience them more. It's really, really neat. <laughs> Something I think that is really missing for kids today, most kids, they spend so much time inside um, and uh, just um, in a school building or now just sitting inside a house looking at a screen being caught at school. Um, it's really sad. We got more? Wow, that's so Look big. At all of them. Yeah. Yeah, that that is a I would Look, can you imagine? Look at that! Oh my! Whoa. Oh my! Would not want to be caught in Look, Look at that! that. It legit made a dent in that plastic. Alright, I think that's enough. And he's off again over there. <laughs> I'm like, I think that's enough. He's like, Dad, I'll tell you what it's enough. I have a technique. Once I find it, I keep it buried in the sand and I do that. Like to where it has a rim before the very top, uh -huh. so it can't climb up. Ah, nice. That's a good idea. I did that for the other crab, and it worked really good. Mm -hmm. This one might not be at home. Oh, it it's at home. home. <laughs> oh, it does work. Oh, well, not for that one. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Ah! <laughs> you know my second favorite thing to do now is what? Catch crabs. <laughs> What's your first favorite thing? Playing Game Boy with you. <laughs> Aww. So, Agent Axe's first favorite thing to do is play Game Boy on the beach in a hammock while the sun's setting. With 
with me. Uh, but watch, watch the theory. The second favorite thing to do is to catch crabs. <laughs> what? Watch the theory. Watch. The okay, theory. let's see. Watch the theory at work. Uh, this time. Okay, so you make the rim so that. Mm -hmm. I see, huh? All right, so we're 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 gonna really test this theory. See if it works. Look out for this kiave tree. There go. Oh, there. there it goes. Watch. Can it get out? Nope. It's running. It's running. Can't get out. Let's try try to get it to scuttle. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. We found two. Dude, there's two. Okay, oh, so there's two. Eggs. Yeah, I wonder if they're mates. Oh, this one's smaller. That one's bigger. Yeah, this one is like too small, maybe. Oh, look, look, turn it upside down. Turn it upside down. That one. Turn that one upside down. You see how much darker this one is? Mm -hmm. Maybe that means it's a male or a female. This one's this smaller. This is probably a male. Yeah, that's probably a male, female? I don't know. No. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty small. You want to just let them go? Yeah. We got plenty. All right. Look at them. Look, look at that. Whoa, that was quick. It's just like berry, berry. All right, so for the final two crabs, we're going to do the crab challenge. Agent X is going to dig in that hole. I'm going to dig in this one right over here. We're going to see who can get the crab first. You ready? Yep. One, two, three, go. That's a beauty. Wow, you took a big hole. Yeah, it's probably not at home. All right, well, we deserve this sugar cane because we just hunted so many crabs. We need to cook them now, though. So, I don't know how we're going to do that, but uh, stay tuned. Haven't seen a minihune yet. What do you think about that, Agent X? What do you think about the, the minihune? Are you a believer? Kind of. Kind of? What do you think about Bigfoot? Think big, oh, well, you, you, you think it's more likely that <clears throat> Bigfoot exists in the Minahune? Uh, uh. Oh, no way! Pull. Is it coming off? Pull hard. Oh, oh, oh. Uh -uh. This tooth's coming out. Uh -uh. It's a molar. Not yeah. hard enough. Not hard enough? Okay. Yeah, that the sugar cane will do it. <laughs> He's about to lose his first molar. And it's, it's hanging on by a gum, isn't it? It completely flipped over. Yeah. So maybe by the end of this video, his tooth will come out. We shall see. All right, so Bigfoot more likely than the Minihune. Okay. Well, well, so why is that? Why do you think that is? I've heard more about Bigfoot. Heard more about Bigfoot. Investigated more about Bigfoot. Right. But just because something is more prevalent in a conversation in society, does that mean it's more I've likely seen. to exist? No, I've seen sometimes they put you too and Darren. Mm, okay he's seen more proof all right all right so uh so we haven't proven that the minihune exists right i guess you could say that all right but we also haven't proven that they do not exist have we have we proven that they don't exist <laughs> how would we prove that the minihune do exist what do you think? We would get the whole world to see one. Yeah. Okay. Catch it on camera. Mm -hmm. Catch uh, a Minahune uh, person on camera. Do you think people would actually believe if they saw it on camera? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Well, uh, maybe if they heard it talking and they saw it a lot on camera. Maybe if they saw a number of the Minahune talking, communing with each other having conversations yeah that would that would prove I think in a lot of people's minds that they do exist although it is possible to fake that so maybe some people wouldn't believe that even if they saw it I find this kind of conversation very interesting some of you may be like what in the world is going on agent X are you really sitting here seriously looking into this camera and trying to tell us that there is a, a a community of very small people that exist somewhere in the world well i'm not exactly trying to tell you that <laughs> but 
I'm trying to investigate something that I find really interesting. And the reason I find it interesting is it has to do with other people. It has to do with Kahu and his friends and his ancestors who have these stories. And our ancestors have, have stories of things that seem fantastic, that seem uh, impossible, right? That seem greater than, than uh, reality can, I guess, withstand. <laughs> than the reality that we see and feel and hear and touch every day. It seems way too far beyond that to be possible. But I think that reality is actually way, way crazier than we think it is. And we only see and sense, feel, touch, smell a very tiny, tiny, tiny aspect of reality. And so, not only is it possible that these people exist, it is, I think, um, not to diminish them or the people who um, told us these stories, but I think that that, however crazy that might sound to you, is actually not really one of the most wildest things. <laughs> that if I found out that was possible, like, well, hey, you know, that's interesting, but you know what I find more interesting than that? What? My own existence. The existence of this person right here. That baffles my mind. Yeah. Just the fact that I exist blows my mind. And I believe it is a fact. Now, there are many people who do not believe that they exist, uh, or at least they don't believe that, that that's how things work. So, Agent X, uh -huh. do you believe you exist? Uh -huh. You believe you are? But how do you know you are? Are what? Existing. Being. How do you know that? I can feel, hear, think, touch, smell. All those things Take. together mean you are? Hmm? Are okay. what though? Are you. But what if you uh, couldn't smell anymore? Would you still be you? Uh -huh. What if you couldn't feel with your fingers anymore? Would you still be you? Uh -huh. So why is it that you think that your existence, that you feeling with your fingers or smelling, has anything to do with your existence? I know there's more, but I don't. I just don't know what it's called. I yeah, don't know what it's I agree. About. There's more. There's definitely more. And uh, I sense that there's more, and many other people do as well. In fact, we always have. Humans always have told stories about the more, about the greater. And so I can't prove that the Menehune exist. I also cannot prove that they do not exist. And I can't actually really prove to you that I even exist, but I believe I exist. And I'm willing to, well, to stake my life on that. No pun intended. That's funny. Enough. So, Agent X, if you exist, do you, did you cause yourself to exist? Do you think that someone else caused you to exist or something else caused you to exist? You think so? I think so. I, um, I, don't believe that I caused my own self to exist. And the reason I don't believe that is because, well, then I, I guess I would have caused everyone else to exist. Or do we all just cause ourselves to exist independently? I don't think so. But uh, that's what I believe. What do you believe? What do you think about this? This is, to me, one of the most interesting conversations. Uh, and I have this conversation with myself a lot. But I'm always thinking about it. I'm always, um, stirring it up in my heart, this conversation. And so, all of these things being said, what is most important and what is most relevant to me is not that I exist or that even Agent Ax exists. What's most important is that we exist together. And there's a man who Somebody said that this man said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so I 
really believe that where two or more are gathered in the name of love, there love chooses to make a home. All right, well, I'll stop blabbing. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if any of you are still listening right now, but uh, we gotta get somewhere to cook these crabs. I guess we can't camp here, and I don't know where we're gonna camp, so. Let's go to our house and then the... I think, I think we're gonna need to go to our house and then the... Uh, uh, or the place we're staying at right now, and I think we're gonna have to cook up the crabs there. Yep. No, but we'll go to the other place that you said we might be able to camp out. We'll see. Either way, we need to get in the car and start driving, so. Can't camp here tonight. I don't want to get arrested. I don't know if they arrest people, maybe they don't. <laughs> but signs say no camping, no fires, no grills, nothing, so. Alright, let's head out. They don't like that. Uh, they probably like it. <laughs> so they're really sandy, they need a, a shower. <laughs> they're shaking hands, they're like, hooray! You rinse them off. Yeah. I don't want to eat a big sandy pot of crabs. <laughs> what about? <laughs> we should invite Adrian Trinity in to get of a shower. <laughs> She would not come here. <laughs> this one got all of its legs ripped off. Oh my goodness! Those crabs are brutal. <laughs> they ripped the legs. All of the legs off of this crab. Well, see, this one only has that two, and this one only has That's three, and the other one is hanging off. See? Look, it's yeah. hanging off by a tiny thread. This one's just. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Mm -hmm. What if it ran over their agent in the day? Oh gosh. Alright, crabs, it's dinner time. Alright, it is crabby. Yeah, it is still hot. I want to get one of the biggest claws. Yeah, that looks so big. Oh. Right, so we're having to eat in the bathroom because this is a very small place we're staying in, and the Asian hummingbird is asleep just right in the next room. So, but yeah, definitely the best meat in a car. Oh, without breaking my tooth. Um, oh, that looks good. Mm. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. One night. This would be tough to survive one, but we could. I mean, I think that we could survive on this. So, you know, we're definitely grateful for these crabs. Um, Yummy. Oh, look, the eyes are up. See that? Mm -hmm. huh, interesting. Pro tip for when it comes to crab eating. crab eating. So, show them what we do. Take it off the crab, and snap the very end of the thicker bottom part off. Uh, you take that part of the leg off. You squeeze on the bottom end uh, or on the gross. thin end until that part comes uh, out. It's so gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just squeeze. Look. Oh, squeeze. biggest one yet. It's oh, pretty gross. It's like popping a gigantic zit. Oh, look at this. But it gets the meat right out. So easy. You guys, we are having a blast here. We've been here for like 20 minutes just solid just eating. This is fantastic. We're gonna be sick though. Oh, uh, no. We're never gonna be good. Alright. Okay. Hello, adventure agents. Welcome back. Okay, so Agent Axe and I are in a top secret location. It's like a beaver. He found these toenail clippers, or Kahu gave him some toenail clippers that we found on the ground. He we said think they may belong to the Menuhune. See, they're very tiny little clippers here. Mm. So that's Just about as big as the Menuhune. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> so, Agent Axe and I did some investigation, and we actually came in contact with the Menuhune. And they gave us some treasure to hide. Some treasure and some crafts that they made. Right, Agent Axe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so check this out. The Menehune made this for us. Look at that. 
Isn't that neat? They made us three of these boxes for all of you to go out and treasure hunt for, for us to put treasure in, okay? Three of these? <laughs> yeah, three of them. I thought so. Were, he didn't know. I already hid them. two of them somewhere on the island of Maui. So this treasure hunt agents that you're about to get clues for here in a minute, riddles with clues that lead to these treasures. There's going to be three different sets of riddles and three different Menuhune boxes with treasure inside. I okay? thought you said you only so I'll got I'll tell you two. about that here in a second. I thought you said you only got I, two. I hid two already. And Agent Axe is out here helping me hide the third one. And so Agent Axe put uh, these oh, bananas yeah. in the cheeks. <laughs> Menuhune is eating the banana. <laughs> so let's see what's inside the treasure box, okay? So it is a puzzle box. You open it up like that. You it's slide also, it to the side. It's a picnic basket. It's a picnic basket. And then you open this up, and inside is the treasure. Now, we have six real silver coins here, each one troy ounce. They are the Liberty coins, and they are worth about, right now, about 32 to $33 each. Six of these coins in here. That and is the second prize, though. The first prize is something the Minahune made out of pure gold. That is really and it, the And it is in this... Real fake leather bag. <laughs> yeah, this real fake primitive leather bag. <laughs> it, this is Agent Axe's, and he gave it to me so we could... Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the Menehune made it too. So mm -hmm. <laughs> anyways, so inside of this bag, this is the top prize. So for those of you who find this one, this prize, right, this specific box, and this box is a very special one. It's going to be the Ooh. hardest to find. And, then, and, uh, and I'll tell you how to find this one specifically in a little bit. It's going to have this beautiful little <laughs> Maui hook that the Menahune made, and it has... It's good for cleaning your teeth. ...this really cool crystal... That I have. ...that Agent Axe gave. He put his prize there. I mean, there. the Menahune And made. But this is the other prize, Agents. This right here is solid gold, and it is worth... It's valued at about $600 just in its value in gold. It's 22 karat gold. Look at that. Oh, so they carved it on both sides. Yeah, it's it's little Minihune. See? Actually, I think this is like South American design, but uh, we can pretend it's Minihune. Anyways, it's actually gold. It's uh, 22 karat gold, and it's worth about $600 in its weight in gold. So, that is for real. For real, for real. So, there is about $800 worth of gold and silver in here. The first family, agent family, to make it here will get the top prize, which is what is inside this little bag. Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, <laughs> I think this, you could actually hook this, a fish with that. You could? I think so, yeah. This is good for cleaning your teeth. Oh, they, this is going to be their prize. He's cleaning his teeth with your prize. <laughs> it's okay. His teeth are not that bad. So, not and then, bad. whoever gets here next, agents... <clears throat> Each agent gets one silver coin. Each agent. So if I'm you got six. an agent I'm of four, six, I'm six people. take four of the coins, leave two. And for the final, uh, for the last agents that come, you take the final silver coin, leave the Menehune boxes where you find them, please. So that future people can come and know that they made it to this location. And if you want to, you can bring your own treasures and leave them inside of here. Some other agents were already doing that. And we have had some awesome agent families go on these treasure hunts, and they have had a really good time. Here's some photos of some of the adventure agent families um, who came out and made it to the treasure, both in Arizona and here on the Hawaii. island of Hawaii. Yes. Aloha, adventure agents. Aloha. Aloha. We found your booty. Woo. Many mahalos. So, Agent X, how did you feel about um, the journey that Kahu took us on? The journey and the story he told us about the Menehune and how he took us to the resting place of some of his ancestors and how he, um, how he used his voice to speak uh, to uh, his ancestors and to ask permission to walk onto this sacred place. What did you think about that? How did you feel about that? I felt like it was like an ancient, ancient language mm -hmm. that he was using. Yes, and it is. It's it's the it's the language of his people, um, the Hawaiian people, and yes, it is a very old language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, so was that was that kind of neat, did mm -hmm. you think? Yes. I thought it was really neat too, Ancients. And so I am not native Hawaiian. Um, and some of you might be thinking, oh, I don't believe that Kahu can talk to his ancestors like that. Or, or I don't believe in some of these stories like the Menehune. And um, like we said earlier, that's not what this is about necessarily, Agent. See, what we say in all of our videos is life is an adventure and what is the key? Well, Love is the key, Agents. And everyone has their stories. You have a story, Agents. I have stories. Agent Access stories. My ancestors have stories. And what we want to do, what love to me looks like, love is a who, I believe, but what love looks like is two or more individuals, like we said earlier, gathered together in the name of love. That's where love is, right? Gathered together in the name of love, that's where love is. Now, what I didn't tell you earlier is the person who said that, who somebody said that they said that, their name is Yeshua or Jesus. Some of you may know him as Jesus. And some of you may know, be familiar Ow. with that st statement. Are you okay? Oh, the, oh, the, the light, it blinds me. The sun just came out. We're turning stone now. <laughs> the sun just peeked out behind the clouds. It's like shining in the perfect gap. <laughs> to, ow! Here. It's like, Put the hat. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Now you look it in too. It looks like uh, I'm okay. You know, actually, my right eye, you can't see very well, so it's perfect. <laughs> so, in the Judeo Christian tradition, Right? Some of you may have heard of that. Someone said something very interesting in there, and that is that God is love. Some of you may have heard of this term God before. Some of you may have different people believe many different things. But in that tradition, there's a statement that says God is love. And I find that statement to be very interesting. And there's a really interesting word that the Hebrew people, which is the, uh, the Judaism, use for the for God and that word is Eloa Eloa can you say that Eloa Eloa E-L-O-A-H now the Hebrew way to, to spell that is different but that's how it's translated in English Lawa yeah but what does that sound like Eloa Aloha yes Bingo, bingo. And I was talking to one of Kahu's friends and he told me something I didn't know that was very interesting. Wasn't it Kahu's brother? No, it wasn't his brother. It was just his friend. Well, I thought um, it was like his brother or cousin. Uh, no. So, I mean, you could say it's his brother, you know? We're all brothers and sisters, right? Uh, so he's, he told me something interesting about the word aloha. It comes from Alo, which is face to face, and ha, which is breath of life. And in the Judeo Christian, the Hebrew tradition, in the story in Genesis, in the beginning, the story of the Creator is that they breathe the breath of life into humanity. And I find that very interesting. Very, very interesting. In that when we come together face to face, the breath of life is right there. Where two or more are gathered in the name of love, the breath of life right there, face to face, breath of life right here in the midst of us. I find that so interesting. And so what today's episode was about to me is about learning about the stories of other people. Because what love looks like is hearing the stories to me of other people, sharing my stories with them and then listening to their stories. And I loved and really enjoyed and I was very honored, I felt, to, to listen to the stories of Kahu and his ancestors. And I, I'm very grateful for him to share that with us. Love to me brings us together and stories bring us together. They spark our imagination. Yeah? You like it when Daddy tells you stories from pure mm -hmm. imagination? Yeah. So, agents, whether or not these stories are true or factual or real, to me is less important than how they bring us together in imagination. All right, agents, so I'm about to share with you two of the clues, two of the riddles, 
<laughs> to find two of these Minahune boxes here on the island of Maui. Nor normally we've been sharing it on our app, but this time I'm going to share it with you all. And they're two simple riddles and clues that will lead you two different locations. I'll do the first clue and then the second clue. Mm. And be sure to leave this there if you find it so that anyone, two years from now, three years from now, you can go on this treasure hunt and find the Minahune boxes here. But agents, for the third treasure, this one right here with the $600 gold Minahune uh, sculpture, you're going to have to check the link in the description down below and subscribe to our app and watch this exact video on our app, on our Venture Agents app. But at the end of the video, there's going to be a special extra riddle. Now, this riddle, agents, is going to be much more difficult to solve, and this location. So, if you do the one on the app, be... you'll get all three riddles at the same time. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, this riddle is going to be much more difficult to solve, and this location is going to be much more difficult to actually get to. And I and I just want to say, agents, to all you families out there, be careful. These treasure hunts can be dangerous. I am not hiding these in a place where I would not take my five-year-old daughter, uh, Agent Hummingbird, for example. But you can certainly hurt yourself if you are not careful hunting for these treasures because they're near some dangerous areas. You just have to do your due diligence and be very, very careful. And also be respectful. Be respectful, please. If you find any stone structures, um, in this area we're hiding at, there's actually some stone walls. Please do not climb on them or move them around. They're very important, and we need to show the uh, the people, the Hawaiian people, or some some aloha, and make sure we we're very careful with, um, and also with uh, um, anything else you find that you think might be precious. Just be careful with it. Stay tuned for the clues. A menehune once was so skilled and so kind to craft up three treasures for Ohana's to find. For the first, you must start near a house made of light just beneath Maui's chin. Such a beautiful sight. Put your back at its front and face ye the sea. Then walk to the path of steep treachery. Go carefully down the obvious path. Don't fall in the sea to suffer its wrath. On reaching the base, look sharp and look high. In shadow of rock by the Ohelo Kai. Enjoy ye the treasure, but leave ye my chest to share the aloha. Please let it rest. The second is found where stories first told with Ki'i Pohaku, the art that's most old. Park near the path that's blocked by rocks three and follow the trail of Menehuni. Stop at the great wall of past ancient time before the great flow, the ocean's lifeline. Go with the flow till wall disappears and look in the tree with rusty barbed spears just like before please leave my chest the treasure is yours but share ye the quest all right agents well if you want the third and the biggest treasure hunt riddle check the link in the description down below so you can subscribe to our app and watch this exact video except at the end there's the third riddle to the biggest treasure hunt of all Good luck on your treasure hunt agents. And remember, please share your experience with us. We wanna see pictures and video clips of your Ohanas going on this awesome treasure hunt. Share it with your friends and family too. Share the adventure. And remember, life is a huakai. And aloha is the key. Agent Tex out. Agent Axe out. And we wanna give a real quick thank you to Glenn and Patricia for providing the awesome drum music that you all heard throughout this video. We were so fortunate to find them and meet them and be able to record their awesome drum music for this video. And we also wanna give a big thank you to Kahu for providing this awesome, awesome experience on the trail for the Minihune. And if you and your Ohana wanna go on an adventure with Kahu, if you ever here on the island of Maui, I'll put his contact information in the description down below, and if he's available, he might be able to take your Ohana on an awesome adventure on the trail of the Menehune.
All right, Adventure Agent families, well, hopefully you enjoyed that episode. And remember, you can get early access to all of our Adventure Agent videos and also watch every single one of our family-friendly videos on our new Adventure Agents app. Check the link in the description down below to see how you can get access to it. Our app is a safe and ad-free place that your family can consume all of our family's content. And don't forget to check out theadventureagents.com slash shop to get all of your Adventure Agents clothing, badges, and our new survival gear, which includes our Adventure Agents survival knife, fire starter, flashlight, backpacks, and so much more. We'll see you on the next adventure. Thank you.